At that union rally in Philadelphia, workers told me that unions should have more power. But I say they have plenty already. Elizabeth and Mallory Factor just wrote a book with an ominous title, Shadow Bosses, Government Unions, the subtitle, Control America and Rob Taxpayers Blind. So, Elizabeth, they control America? They say we're powerless. Yeah, they do. But they really do control America. They're in government. They're in our military. They're in our national security sites. They're in our in schools. In the private sector, they're now small, where people have a right to choose, yes or no. Mm -hmm. uh, Increasingly, the industries that are not unionized grew and the union share shrank. But in government, right. it's bigger than ever. Yeah, because, of course, the unionized shops in the private sector go out of business. But the government never goes out of business. And now 41 percent of government employees all across our nation are unionized. And this is having a very big effect. In fact, we think, we think government employee unions are fueling big government and government growth. And that's one of our big takeaways. Well, yeah, they... I'll, I'll let you explain how they do it, but they want bigger government because then they get stuff. It's real easy. It's one of the greatest scams being perpetrated on the American public. Money goes from the government to the unions, to the politicians who are bought and paid for, back to the unions. And I mean, it is, it is an amazing scam. And in the case of the leaders of the unions, you say they are the true one percent. Oh, of course. I mean, they gave a lot of money to Occupy Wall Street. You know, you know who? Do you know what Occupy Wall Street should have been occupying? Their plushy headquarters. These are the people who make a half a million dollars a year. One of them, three hundred and twenty-five thousand in eighteen months on private planes. I mean, it is astounding. Yeah, they make about ten times what the rank and file union members make. Talk about income inequality. And you mentioned the plushy offices. That they really are elegant. The, yeah, and the the teachers union office. I I tried to go in to take pictures recently, and but I'll do that on. Uh, I'll give the explanation of that on another show. But those places are beautiful. You say uh, that the union supports some shadowy causes. Oh, they sure do. Uh, from me Media Matters. I don't know if you all know what Media Matters is. Well, I know because they, this is a media review group, but it, it dedicates itself to killing off Fox. So That's right. They've come after me. $100,000 NEA, National Education Association. You know, the teachers' the union. The teachers. Right, the teachers' union. But the rank and file members don't know that. But also, AFSME, American Federation of State Communist Employees, gave them money. The AFL CIO, CIO gave them money. But you know what the teachers classified it as? Public relations. Right. Well, it is. It's public relations right. for their side. And Media Matters and the Democrats say more money for unions. So. See, but, no, but the members don't know this. The members never get a chance to know how this money's being spent. When it's classified as public relations, it just goes into administration and overhead. And the members seem happy when I go to union rallies. They're all enthused. Well, I, I would disagree with you on that. When they have an opportunity to have their job without having to be part of a union, they vote pretty quickly to not. In Wisconsin, when they were forced to pay tribute, or to be a member of the union to keep their job, half left like that. Yeah, and it's important to give all of those rank and file union members a real voice and a vote. So unions are not pro-worker. They're pro-shadow bosses. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, you got my attention when you talked about the military. I assume the military is an exception. A third of the military are civilian employees, and of those, 60% are already unionized. That means that you have unions on military bases filing grievances and telling people how they can use these civilian employees. In fact, we found a grievance that was hilarious where uh, the union had filed a grievance on a military base when the price of soda went from 50 cents to 55 cents. This constant filing of grievances makes it tough to run an enterprise. Right, and the poor JAG Corps had to fight that and imagine how much taxpayer dollars went to just defeat that one grievance. So. And by national security, you mean Border Patrol, That's FEMA, right. the Emergency Management Agency, Immigration, mm -hmm. even NASA scientists. That's right, even the Peace Corps. Just looking at Homeland Security, we found, we found 62 people getting paid to do Homeland Security work. And you know what they're doing full time? What? Just union work. 
This is Homeland but, Security. But Homeland Security is 40% unionized. Well, I'm depressed. I don't know about you. <laughs> Thank you. A couple writing a book together and still sitting next to each other. Mallory and Elizabeth Factor.